Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to install a Sanyo device keypad um, setup program. Um, this is done in Linux Mint. The reason for the video is that some people have had problems installing this in Linux. It seems to work perfectly well in Windows, but in Linux there seems to be a problem. Okay, so I'm going to go through the process that I'm using to install this uh, in my uh, Linux Mint setup. Okay, let's get started. Uh, my keypad is a 3x3 key keypad, uh, by way of example. Notice the uh, connector comes from the top or the back of it. That's very important in the layout of which key, uh, keep, uh, keys you're going to program. Keep it plugged into your computer while we're doing this. Uh, also, uh, f on the piece, only piece of paper that comes with this, the only thing I'm going to lift from here is the URL of the um, zip file that we need to install. So take a note of that URL from there. Okay, now I've opened my default browser, which is Firefox, and typed in the address box the address of the SEO device help slash unix where I should be able to download the zip file. Okay, so when I press enter on this, you'll see there's a problem. Firefox does not support web HDI, HID. HID stands for Human Interface Device, which normally covers things like the mouse, the keyboard, etc., but also uh, games consoles and uh, joysticks, things like that, which you need to download this zip file. Now it's important to understand that uh, this is just a problem for downloading the zip file. Once we've got it running, Firefox can be used with no problem whatsoever. Now, after going googling the problem, I found that Firefox, as far as I know, has no intention of supporting HID, Web HID, because it deems it uh, somewhat unsafe. So for security reasons it won't do it. The only way around that I found in order to be able to download this zip file, unless you can get it from somebody else who's already downloaded it, uh, the only other way is to use a different browser. And I'm going to use my second browser which is Chrome. So unfortunately I'll have to close Firefox and I will have to open Chrome. Okay, I've opened Chrome. Now let's type in the uh, URL. I've copied it, so I'll paste it in. Press Enter. Well, here we go. We get something a little different. Um, okay, might not look very exciting. First of all, let's choose English, although that won't make a lot of difference. Uh, there's no problem. Just choose English here. It's still still not uh, very exciting. So what we have to do, first of all, we'll go over to the left-hand side here where it says device. Click on that. Okay. Again, not a lot of help. But if you go to the bottom left-hand side here where it says document, click here to see document. If I click there on the document, then we get this okay again not very useful even if I press English um, what happens is this page itself is actually the manual but that's not what I'm wanting at the moment what I'm wanting is to download the desktop app right at the top here top right hand side you can download it uh, for Windows Linux and Mac OS or just Windows so we'll do the Windows Linux Mac OS since we're on Linux click there and we should uh, download. It says done here. It's only a, a few megabytes, 3.4 megabytes, so it shouldn't take long to download. So we've downloaded our zip file at long last using Chrome. Okay, I'm in my home directory now and I'm first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another folder um, and I'm going to call it SEO. I'm going to leave it in 
uppercase letters so it's obvious. This is important. In here we're going to place all our files and when we run the executable it must be run within this directory. Cannot be run anywhere else. So make sure you've got it in here uh, and name it according to however you want. But in my case I'm calling it SAIL. So the first thing I'm go, going to go to is Downloads and there's our zip file that we downloaded. So I'm going to copy that and go back and uh, go to SAIL and paste. Okay, so there's our zip file. Okay, let's open it up. Double click and extract. Confirm, extract. Okay, close this, close this. So, there we go, those are our files. Now, let's have a look at some of these files. This top folder here, HTML, is very important because it contains all the necessary uh, URLs, web pages necessary for um, the user interface. SAO uses the browser, in my case Firefox, as a input output interface, the user interface. So these, this folder here, HTML folder, contains all the necessary web pages that it needs for this. So it's very important and it doesn't matter what uh, machine you run, this, this must always be run within this um, folder. We have some notes for Mac and Linux, that's important, you can read that. But for, in my case, I'm only really interested in this particular um, command line interface. SEO CLI Linux. Right, that's the one we're going to use. So, from now on, we need to use the uh, command line. So we need to open a terminal. Okay, we've opened our terminal. Now the first thing we've got to do, we're in the home directory, so we need to change to the SAO in my example, change directory, and let's do a listing. And there we go, those are our files as we've seen them. Now you'll notice the file we're interested in is this one here, the uh, Linux executable. That's the one we're going to use and we're going to run in this directory. However, you'll notice that it's not executable there. As most of you know who are familiar with Linux, if you've just downloaded a, an executable straight or if you've uh, loaded it from a, a thumb drive, for example, that has uh, FAT, file system in it, then you will lose the flag that makes it an executable. That flag is missing because it can't be stored in the FAT file system. So, the first thing you need to do is make this executable. So what we're going to do, we're going to go change mod, change the mode to um, plus x, plus executable. And the file we're talking about, of course, is the SAO underscore CLI underscore Linux. Okay. okay. Let's do that. And there we go. And then let's just do a quick list again. And as you can see now, we have uh, we have it. Actually, it changed color anyway. Remember, it goes green color when it's executable. But you can see here the X, meaning executable for everybody. But also, of course, it's changed color to green. That's uh, another indication. Okay, so first of all, let's try and run it. Now, we have to run this as sudo. Uh, we don't have a choice on that because it's making some calls to the uh, operating system itself, you know, to the kernel. So we have to be careful, make sure we have sudo, otherwise it won't won't work. So sudo and of course we give it our path and it's um, sayo underscore cli underscore linux okay so that should do that ah now there's an interesting 
little thing. It says it cannot run because there's some library file, some package missing. And the package that's missing is this package here. Okay, so what we have to do, we have to install that. So now you have to make sure, of course, you've got an internet connection. And let's do the honors by uh, download. Okay, um, we're going to have to use sudo, of course, for the apt command, and we're going to install this file. Now, notice uh, the file we actually need does not include this, this dot, so dot, don't need that, but we do need the zero at the end. Actually, we do not need uh, the dot at the end either, we don't need that, just the zero. That's all we need. Okay, uh, that is the file that's missing. And notice it's an HID file again, very similar to the problem we had before. But this time, we need it to access the uh, USB drive that contains our keypad. So let's see if we can do anything with that. Okay, that seems to be working all right so far. Shouldn't take too long to download and install. And there we go, complete. Okay, so let's try again. Uh, after downloading that file and installing it. Uh, so we'll go to try and run the uh, executable again. Right, it's now working. What's it? How do we know it's working? Well, what it's telling us is, okay, we've got to open our browser here. We've got to open the browser because um, Uh, now there's two ways we can do this. We can either uh, copy this and then paste it into the browser uh, or you can just click on it and it will open the browser. I'm going to do it the the uh, hard way so it works in every case. And now why do we need to do this? Well remember what we said the input output interface for the user is done through the browser so we have to open the browser now I think in Windows, if it was a Windows executable, this is done automatically for you, so it makes things a little bit easier. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more to it. I'm going to open my browser manually, and the browser I'm going to open is going to be um, Firefox. Notice the address that we're typing into the box, or pasting into the box, is uh, 127.0.0.1. That IP address means a loopback address. In other words, it will not go out onto the network in order to uh, to find that web page. It's going to look instead into our the folder that we mentioned earlier, the HTML folder, for all the web pages it needs. So, and that the only other thing you need to do is make sure you copy correctly the port address, which in our case is 7296, as given by SEO. Now, when I press this, uh, enter this, we should have... Um, connection to our internals. There we go. Right, this more or less means everything is working. We, all we need to do now is search for the device. Make sure we remember our device is plugged in. So let's do a search. We'll click on that. Right, and we found one device, which is a 3x3, as you know, 3x3 three three, um, keypad. So let's click on that and connect the device. And there we go, there's my keypad in all its glory. Now when you're programming these keypads, you do not need to press any of the keys on the keypad for programming it. Um, and you'll see here that uh, I've actually programmed eight of the keys. The one key I've not programmed is this key here. Okay, I've not, key, I've not programmed that yet. So let's try and program that key as way of an example. Now I'm not going to go through all the necessary things you can do with uh, this keypad. I'm only going to go through this one example. But I think it's a worthwhile example to show. Okay, so first of all, let's click on the key we want to change. Now, <laughs> what we need is default mode. Now I, silly billy me, thought that the default mode was the default, but it isn't. The default mode is keyboard. So we have to go to key mode here, click open, 
and set it to default. This is the easiest mode to program. There are many things you can do with these keypads. I'm only going to go through the easiest. And what I want to do with this keypad, or with this particular key, sorry, is change it to Control C. So the modifier key I want, press here to change the modifier key, is Control. Now I've got two choices. I can either have left or right control. OK, so I'm going to choose left control. It doesn't matter which. Uh, by the way, you can have more than one modifier key. Um, you can have, for example, control alt or whatever you wish to, uh, or, or even three or four you can have all of them I think not quite sure I never tried it but I'm going to choose left control confirm that right so that's left control and the, key, the uh, alphanumeric key I want is uh, C notice you can also choose uh, uh, function keys as well okay confirm that so left control C confirm there we go, left control C. However, that has only been recorded in memory. It has not been recorded actually on the keypad. And the important thing about these SEO devices is you should be able to plug them in any computer and they should do exactly what as they're programmed to do on any computer without any SEO software being installed. So it's got to be stored in the keypad. And to do that, we go up here, save forever strange sort of way of explaining it but there we go and if you do save that at the bottom you'll see save successful okay so um, we've now programmed our keypad with control C and we'll see in a minute we'll test that out in a minute okay now uh, to finish off I'm going to close the browser so let's go up here to close the browser okay you can see here we're still in the executable. The executable has not been terminated. All we've done is close the browser, which is our input-output uh, system, but the executable hasn't been stopped yet. So we need to close the executable. Well, to do that, the only way i found we can do it is by pressing Control-C. So pressing Control-C will terminate the executable. The printout here that you can see on this screen from this executable is not really that important to us um, it's a little bit of uh, logging history of what happened if you have a problem you might be able to find what the problem is in this this case we're not too interested in this um, so uh, basically we just want to terminate the executable to do that I'm going to press control C uh, so but but I'm going to do it on my keypad Okay, there we go, control C, so it terminates. Okay, that's everything. Um, I hope this was useful to you. Um, that's the way I solve the problems. Uh, maybe it might not work on all systems, of course, but uh, I think you should find it useful for most of your Linux installations. Okay, thanks for watching. See you again.